electrifying market jitters. Why Nairobi Securities Exchange continues to perform beyond expectation. Two weeks to the general election. Good evening, many thanks for joining us. My name is O'Brien Kimani. We're coming to you from the trading floor of Nairobi Securities Exchange. Later on, I'll be talking to Kevin Miner. He's a market dealer at Equity Investment Bank. He'll be explaining to us what is driving the market. But for now, we join Mogo Kibati. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Sunlam Kenya Limited. He'll be explaining to us where the insurance market is going from here. Mogo, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Yes. Uh, almost one year since you rebranded to Sunlam. How has the market um, responded to, to your brand? Oh, I think quite positively, uh, frankly speaking. Uh, the Sunlam brand is a very well-known brand in the corporate world, uh, being as it is the largest financial services uh, company footprint-wise on the continent. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our corporate clients and our corporate partners, uh, they received very positively because it's a brand they know well, a very strong brand, mm -hmm. and they like the idea of a close association because they know that potential for them in mm. terms of um, the services we offer them. I think for the retail market, uh, it's a bit slower, uh, but we expected that. Uh, it's a bit slower always to sell a new brand, but we're finding that uh, with time and as the months go by, and as they get accustomed to what Sanla means for them, the brand is growing much stronger, even on the retail side. Mm -hmm. yes. well, you know, for a company with an asset base of about 100 billion US dollars, you know, coming into a market whereby the, the asset base is actually almost bigger than the entire market, why would you want to come into such a small market when you're such a big player? So just to clarify, and I think, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity, that Sanam actually has been a shareholder um, for the last uh, 13 um, or so years. Uh, but has really preferred to stay in the background. Mm -hmm. And my view and the view of the board and management uh, at Sunlam Kenya was it was time now to bring to the fore uh, the Sunlam brand. Mm -hmm. And why? Uh, because the market is changing. The market is changing, the Kenyan market. Mm -hmm. uh, not just insurance market, but financial services in general. And it's changing the way the economy is changing. Mm -hmm. We are globalizing more. Um, the middle class is growing at a terrific pace. The economy has been growing apace, and you will see that not just Sunlam, but a lot of other big actors and big players mm -hmm. in the insurance and financial services sector and outside as well, from Europe, from the US, have been coming into the market. Reason being, they all can see that this economy, as a Kenyan economy, as a East African e regional economy, mm -hmm. has tremendous potential going forward. And for this reason, we decided that it was time to bring the Sunlam muscle to the fore. Mm -hmm. And as I said when we were rebranding, it wasn't just a superficial change of name. Mm -hmm. But we want to bring to bear the Sunlam uh, processes, systems of governance, technical expertise, actuarial expertise, um, and, and leverage them on Sunlam Kenya on behalf of our partners, clients, and customers. Mm -hmm. uh, because I do think uh, that a lot of people can see that in the next five to ten years, this will be quite a deep market. You, 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 you actually put it right. You held about 13% of uh, Pan-African group. Uh, now you hold 56%? Um, so Sanam Kenya has actually been the majority shareholder for the last 13 years mm -hmm. and still has 56% of, yeah. um, of, of uh, Sanam Kenya, mm -hmm. what is now Sanam Kenya, mm -hmm. Sanam Group. And, but now, as you will see, w you've heard about announcements, obviously, which are in the public domain, that um, we've acquired Sunlam. The Sunlam Group has acquired uh, sig a significant shareholding of uh, Pinebridge. Pinebridge a yeah. And that is, in, that is in tandem with Sunlam's decision to deepen its presence in the East African region mm -hmm. um, as part of its Pan-African uh, pa 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 pan strategy. So as I've said, uh, 34 markets, I mean, there's no other financial services uh, business, banking or otherwise, that is on 34 African countries, north, south, east, west. Uh, and the reason for that is because Sunlam has made a decision to deepen its uh, services on the African continent because sub-Saharan Africa is going to grow terrifically over the next five to ten years. Mm -hmm. And Sunlam, I think, has a vantage point to be able to leverage that. So you must also see Sunlam Kenya as part and parcel of the wider Pan-African strategy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know for sure that South African companies you know, have found the Kenyan market to be a very difficult market to operate in. Uh, so how are you going to do things differently? Well, the, the very good question. And um, 
And the reason why Sunlam has been successful in being able to expand to 34 markets where others from their country have not is because of the federated strategy that Sunlam undertakes. Sunlam has a clear strategy of choosing partners in local markets, mm. and they have partners in this local market, mm -hmm. in Kenya, in Uganda, in all other African markets, and allowing those partners to actually manage, really, and run the company locally, manage the boards locally, so you'll find a very strong local presence on our board, very strong local management team um, running Sunlam Kenya, with a back office and the background and support, governance support, structural support, technical support of the Sunlam group. So it is a combination of those two that should make it work. You, you, you control about uh, nine, is it nine, nine percent of the Kenyan market. Well, in, 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 in life, in life, yes, in life, and at about one percent in general. Yeah, but growing mm. very fast. Growing very I, fast. I, I, I dare say we probably are the fastest growing general insurance business in this country today. We need to check facts on yes. that one. Uh, but I want to want to find out. Um, this was actually a drop. Currently, you control about eight percent, which was a drop from nine point eight percent, right? We control 9% of life insurance, which is a drop from previous years. Yeah. I mean, Pan the former Pan-Africa obviously was um, a major, had a major market share about five years ago mm -hmm. and uh, has lost, did lose some market share over those few years. Mm -hmm. But over the last year, we have had a new five-year strategy, turnaround strategy, mm -hmm. and we've seen the life business now begin to strengthen and pick up both corporate and retail. Uh, we picked up a general insurance business about two years ago in 2015. Mm -hmm. That was not part of our stable before. That yeah. was a business that we bought in. Mm -hmm. That's a 1%. Uh, business you're talking about, it was new, but growing rapidly, you know, growing pretty rapidly and gaining significant market share at a rapid pace. Mm -hmm. So over the next uh, th four to five years, we see ourselves moving in the top three, top four position composite, uh, combining both businesses. And when you look at the Kenyan market, you know, I mean, we've been stuck with, um, with about uh, uh, 2 to 2.5% uh, uh, worth of business. How are you going to deepen these? What innovations are you going to bring into the market? So I think you're referring to the penetration yeah, of insurance penetration services of insurance, as a percentage yeah. of GDP. We're mm. about sli shy, slightly shy of 3%, especially with the basing of GDP. Yeah. Look, I think that um, it's a combination of many things. Um, the, general e the general economic environment needs to be conducive. You know, the middle class has got to be able to grow. Education needs to, uh, to be enhanced. And all these moves are being made. You can see reforms in the education sector, financial services sector, the combination of the financial uh, regulators. Our own regulator in the insurance sector is also bringing in new guidelines, uh, what we call risk-based regime, mm. uh, which is supposed to, and I think it will work and we support, um, make, bring some rigor into the way insurance companies, both life and general, um, handle their finances, handle policy, uh, the, the policy premiums that they're getting from their clients and customers. Because in the past, there's been a bit of recklessness in the way this has been handled, and mm -hmm. uh, the insurance sector therefore has received a bad a bad name. But going forward with the implementation of the risk-based regime, uh, we shall be forced and welcome it to be able to match funds for the promises that we have made to our customers and clients. To make mm -hmm. sure that whether the, you be a general or a life insurance client or customer, we will keep our promises to you and our commitments to you and the funds that we have in, um, in our businesses are available to match the promises we keep. So when you look at all those, mm -hmm. that's a, the environment. As Sunla, we uh, intend to be at the head of that game. Uh, in fact, uh, in terms of governance, I, you know, we're we, we already uh, far ahead of the game because, and the reason we're able to welcome the risk-based regime is because we already adhere to it anyway as Sunlam, as a group. Um, innovation is going to be critical. We all know what's happening in technology. Uh, I think it's become a cliche to say that we shall be disrupted. It's an <laughs> obvious thing. Uh, the, challenge, the challenge of disruption and technology, is it's not just technology, it's also who is able to understand what the customer really needs and tie that to technology and give the silver bullet solution. Uh, typically, we know that normally comes out of the industry. Uh, we are uh, keenly aware of that. Mm. Uh, but we feel that um, we have to be nimble, we have to be flexible, we have to be alive to the changes around the market, but most importantly, we must be able to receive feedback from our customers, process it, and give them solutions that are really attuned to what they need as opposed to what we think we can deliver. Mm -hmm. you, you, early this year, you were in the news when you called your profit warning. And uh, you did so in a market whereby uh, uh, anything can raise eyebrows. Uh, what actually happened? As I've said before, and I think, uh, I think in the last few days have been reports of listed companies that don't follow 
uh, rules, CMA rules to the letter, such as we do, getting mm -hmm. fined. Mm -hmm. We adhere, governance-wise, to CMA regulations to the letter. And it's very clear, when you realize or you have anything to make you believe that uh, your profits may dip below 25% of the previous year, mm -hmm. you're obligated to inform the market as soon as you find that out, which is what we did. Mm. Uh, conversely, as soon as you find out that maybe that's not going to be the case, you do the same thing. And in both cases, we were closely liaising with the regulators, mm -hmm. both regu uh, the CMA and the IRA. Mm -hmm. And so the reason for that happening was, as you know, right now, in the last few weeks, there has been new guidelines released uh, yeah. by the IRA in terms of uh, the risk-based regime I'm talking about, interest margins. And it has not been clear up to recently exactly what that would be. And then without getting into technical details, mm -hmm. actuarial details, um, the kind of factors that are applied by the regulator on the policyholder funds that we carry from, for different re from different revenue streams and different products mm -hmm. have an impact on the bottom line. And I think the clarity of that has, ca has emerged over time. And as soon as that became clear to us, and we knew what our position would be with clarity, then we came back to the market. And I have to say the market received it quite well. Uh, the fact that we had won them before uh, and that we retracted the warning as soon as we had clarity. You used to be a client of, um, of Chase Bank. And we know the situation of Chase Bank as we stand now. Mm -hmm. How has this impacted your business? Not at all. Um, I think it's important to say that uh, I, I know a lot of financial services have been uh, impacted by Chase Bank. Uh, obviously, when you're in the financial services and you uh, with an asset base, asset base as large as ours, uh, it's we're in many banks. But all I, all I have to say is that uh, the impact of Chase Bank on our particular asset base has been minimal, negligible, I will say. Negligible. Yeah. Uh, Mugo, because we have to wind up, uh, when you look at the Kenyan market, mm. uh, what is going to be the catalyst for growth in the mid-term to long-term? Um, you mean general, not yeah. just financial services? Yeah. I think that we must continue to have good governance. You know, I, you know this is topical uh, six weeks to an election, but I think as uh, Dr. Arthur Kamp uh, the Sunlam economist that we just listened to a mm. uh, few, you know, few days ago indicated the strengthening of our institutions remains the most important thing we as Kenyans must continue to do. Over the last 20 years, we have seen tremendous institutional reform in this country, resulting in a new constitution in the year 2010. Um, that constitution w that completely revolutionized our governance system. But beyond creating new structures of government, but you know, open, open government to transparency and accountability, um, having a plan such as Vision 2030, mm -hmm. a clear, predictable, long-term plan upon which both government and private sector players can make predictable long-term plans. So institutions, the judiciary, the police force, um, the way we go about elections, the way we go about planning transformational large projects and handling our fiscal uh, strategy, you know, the way we go about holding an annual deficit and long-term debt. Mm -hmm. All those managed properly is what we must get right. And as long as we get that macro picture right, mm -hmm. at the micro level, companies such as Sunlam and all the other actors mm -hmm. uh, in this market will thrive. And we've got a lot of innovative young people, young and old actually, let me say. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of companies that are nimble, both local as well as international, that will be, that, uh, that and I think innovation and technology will be big in Kenya, as long as that macro picture is gotten right. Very well, and I also want to hear, uh, mm -hmm. uh, finally, from you. Um, mm -hmm. So, as players in the market, how are you going to deal with undercutting, which is, which is a big challenge, actually, in the market, and, of course, the issue of fraud, which is costing your business. Let well. me talk about undercutting. I think, for me, uh, undercutting does not worry me too much, because what we need to do, I mean, if you divided business, a financial services business, into two levels, mm -hmm. retail and corporate, at the corporate level, we already, I think, are there because you're dealing with sophisticated players with large amounts of money. And the question is, are you going for the guy who's undercutting cheap price or the value, the value for service you get for every shilling you pay mm -hmm. is what counts? And we don't sell cheapest. Sunlam is not going to be the cheapest name around the game. We mm -hmm. sell value and quality and excellence and keeping the promise. And as long as that's what we do, undercutting doesn't bother me. When it comes to fraud, uh, definitely we have to tighten our governance structures, uh, which, we, which we have done uh, in Sunlam, Kenya. But I think we have a great team of uh, employees and staff at Sunlam, Kenya, who all understand that fraud is not the way to go. Good. Mogo, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Mogo Kifati is the Chief Executive Officer of Sunlam Group, Kenya, joining us here.
to help us understand what is happening in the insurance industry and you have heard it from him. This is a trading bell. Stay right here. We are back shortly. look at your figures and how they treated on the just concluded one week. Kevin Miner is a dealer at Equity Investment Bank joining us here. Uh, thank you very much indeed Kevin for joining us. Now when you look at all these figures what conclusions do you make? Um, I'd say it's, it's, it's a much better time uh, compared to I mean it's, a pr it's, it's an election period coming in and uh, historically during election uh, run-up we see equities really uh, subsiding and going down but right now there's so much investor confidence, we're still seeing foreign inflow. So I think it's, it's a better time, a much better time than we've ever had, mm -hmm. if I'd say, yeah. Mm -hmm. And wh what is happening to Uchumi? I mean, it has become a star performer in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Uchumi recently, I mean, news hit the headlines that they got some funding from the government. And there's also uh, a couple of uh, private investors who are suiting Uchumi. So, I mean, uh, they've, they've re-strategized, they've brought in a, a, a professional to help them cut their costs, to help them uh, stock their shelves better. I mean, it's, 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 it's the story. People are just buying the story. I think it's just investor sentiments that it's going to, to I mean, to be a better performer than they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, it, but, but, I mean, when you look at Kenya Airways, you know, losing about 7.22%, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yet there has been a lot of uh, uh, sentiments about, uh, you know, the uh, restructuring process. Yeah. So how comes uh, Kenya Airways is not performing as, 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 as a tune is from other days? Uh, I think the, the issue with Kenya Airways is uh, historically the government has come in to bail them out. It's not the first time they're getting new money. It's not the first time they're talking about restructuring. And uh, from, from the losses, I think they are too deep in the red. So it's not something investors are really buying into that in the short to medium term they're going to, to, to resurface. So I think it's, it's, it's a positive news. It's a boost, but not uh, exactly what investors are looking for. I mean, there are better options compared to, to Kenya Airways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, uh, let's talk about Safaricom. Um, and today, we saw it hit uh, record levels. Uh, what is driving all this? I mean, with Safaricom, I mean in Kenya, there are only a couple of uh, names and investor, especially foreign investors, considering this is a foreign-driven market. There are only a couple of names an investor can, uh, and when talking of an investor, I'm mostly talking about a foreign investor mm -hmm. can hold in their basket, and it's either the top-tier banks or Safaricom. And Safaricom enjoys the monopoly in, in, in the telco sector. So um, if you look at, at their earnings growth, at their um, expected future growth, at competition, at regulations, it, Safaricom is in a much, advan uh, at it's an advantage point mm -hmm. over, over most of its peers mm -hmm. yeah, in the frontier market. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, you know, in many months, uh, we have uh, Stanley, but for Harry Rates, you know, mm -hmm. featuring about the top gainers getting about 8%, what's driving this actually? I mean, that, that's a surprise guess to the gainers. Um, uh, real estate hasn't really been taken up, especially it comes to trading in Kenya. So yeah. uh, considering it's an election period, I'm thinking guys, uh, or investors rather, uh, may maybe shying off from uh, private investments and they're going into more structured because it's, it's, uh, it's a pool you're brought together so your risks are, are minimized. It's, it's, I mean, you have a better confidence going into a structured program. Okay. I think that's what's really uh, boosting mm -hmm. for Harry. Going forward, what do you, how do you see the market performing? Uh, this is a talk that we've been having as brokers, as investments, <coughs> as foreign, uh, with our foreign clients. And like I stated earlier in the show, is uh, during election, we, us we usually expect to see a dip. And that has not happened. Pers in my personal opinion, I don't see it happening now. Because, um, I mean, like I said, we have all these talks about the banks, maybe, uh, and, and a possible uh, repeal cap, uh -huh. the rate cap. Yeah. So that's investors are really buying into that sentiment, and that's why we are really seeing all this foreign inflow. Safaricom is, is, is always uh, 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 
I mean, it's always beating its 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 previous uh, earnings. So, I, I see these these prices sustaining, yeah, in the in the short to medium term, All and right. that means even post the election period. Good. Yep. Maina, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Kevin Maina is a market dealer at Equity Investment Bank, joining us here on the trading bell. Stay right here. Thank you, Diana. That's a nice question on dividends. Uh, I'd say yes. Dividends are taxed, uh, especially when it comes to individuals, and they're taxed at 5% interest rate. Uh, the reason for this is dividends are considered like any other a new uh, a source of income, and these are income you're getting from the listed company. So yes, they are ch taxed, and the only way you cannot be taxed is when you get a tax exempt certificate from the Kenya Revenue Authority, like we've seen with some of uh, uh, insurance companies who do invest in the listed uh, equities. So yes, they do tax. Well, and with that historical perspective of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, we come to the end of the Trading Bell program for today. Many thanks indeed for your company. We look forward for the same next Thursday, same time right here on KBC Channel 1. Our communication avenues are open. Facebook page is the Trading Bell TV show. My Twitter handle is at O'Brien Kimani and at the Trading Bell. Well, our SMS line is... 22162, remember always to start with the word B-I-Z. On behalf of the entire Trading Bell TV crew, we'll see you again on next Thursday. Between now and then, have yourself a profitable time ahead of you. Bye.